Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham is with us. He was, of course, leading these hearings with William Barr today. Senator, good to see you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. Your thoughts on the hearings. Let's just start mm -hmm. there. And will Bill Barr do the things that Jeff Sessions did not do, and that is the deep state, that's Hillary Clinton, and all the people we mentioned earlier? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, I've seen no evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russians, but I've seen a lot of corruption in the Department of Justice and the FBI. I have every, conf have every confidence that Mr. Barr is going to ask questions. How can you certify to the FISA court on four separate occasions that you have uh, enough evidence to get a warrant against an American citizen when the evidence, the dossier, is unverified to this day? I think he's going to look long and hard at the Department of Justice and the FBI and the way they conducted the Clinton investigation and the way, this, the way they started up the uh, Mueller investigation. Here's long story short. Uh, Mr. Barr believes that politicians should not interfere in criminal investigations, but he also believes that criminal investigators should not be out to get politicians, and they were out to get Trump. There are a lot of forces working against them, but for example, I know if I deleted emails, ask and watch the <laughs> yeah, hard really. drive, yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd go to jail. Yeah. Are you confident yeah. he will do that? Because every other American, I guess if you're being investigated and subpoenaed your emails, you can erase them? Is that what Hillary has taught us? Because I don't believe, I believe that's breaking the law. Well, here's what I hope. I hope you go back and look at why she got away with this. They were out to, to get Trump. They say so themselves, and they're out to help her. So I want him to do more than Mr. Horowitz did, explain to the country how it got so bad, I want him to tell us what happened with the FISA warrant application process. How could it get so off base? If there was a counterintelligence investigation of the President of the United States, I want him to tell us how it started, who started it. I want him to clean up this mess. Uh, I'm not expecting him to throw Mueller over, but I am expecting him to clean up the mess at the Department of Justice and FBI, and I think the President picked the right guy to do it. Well, I think there was, we now know for a fact that Russian lies were used to yes. purposely rig, and also an investigation into Hillary was rigged. Paid for by the it Democratic Party. It was a favored Party. candidate over another yeah. candidate. Yeah. All right. And an insurance policy and a leak strategy if that failed. All right. Let me, right. Let me move to the issue of immigration. Okay. I think the president, I don't really care which way he gets it because right. lives are at stake. We have 90% of heroin coming into this country from our southern border, human trafficking, et cetera. Right. The president decides a national emergency is needed. That's fine. Um, right. You've been talking to people and you have a different mm -hmm. approach. What is it? Well, I think he needs to build this wall because we need the wall. I think Democrats are being hypocritical because they all voted for more wall funding than the president's asking for. So there's two ways to build a wall, Sean. Do it by yourself through executive action, which is the last resort but may be necessary. The other option is to get a legislative solution. Nancy Pelosi has said, I'll give you a dollar for the wall and that's it. I believe there are Democrats in the Senate that would work with the president to fund the wall adequately, meet his priorities if he would do other things. So, Mr. President, if Democrats come to you in the Senate and say that we would like to work with you for a few weeks to see if we can solve this problem, give them, the, give them a chance, and if they don't deliver, do it by yourself. Do you think that are you convinced that those Democrats exist in the yeah, Senate? Yeah, well... Well, they got to they got to come out of the shadows and say, we're willing to work with you, Mr. President, to to meet your priorities. And we want some things, too. But we reject Nancy Pelosi's idea that you only get a dollar for the wall. If there are Democrats willing to come forward to work with you, Mr. President, for a few weeks to see if we can solve this, take them up on it. And if you don't get the and you think that'll you want, happen. So you're going to have what, five of 10 Republicans, five, 10 Democrats that say, give us a chance to do our job, open the government. And then if, it, if we don't get it done in yeah. three weeks, you should declare the national emergency and use Pentagon yeah. funds uh, yeah. or other resources. Yeah. Mr. President, if you're watching this show, I think there's some Democrats that would work with you that, that we could get a deal with in the Senate. By the way, no amnesty is involved in uh, this? In my view, for $5 billion, you don't get a pathway to citizenship. Let's keep it simple. The Bridge Act, work permits, no citizenship. If Democrats in the Senate will work with you, give them a chance, a couple of weeks. If it doesn't work, do it yourself, uh, but give it one last shot. His first question is going to be $1 Nancy 
okay, that's maybe exactly those senators right. will work with you. I wouldn't doubt they were embarrassed by Nancy yeah, Pelosi right, and probably right. worried about her extremism. The right. first question is be, well, what is Nancy going to say? I'm down to hear what they will say. <laughs> Get them in a room and ask them that question, see where we go. All right, Senator Graham, uh, good to see you. You're looking live at the hearing of President Trump's Attorney General nominee, William Barr, fielding questions from lawmakers on Capitol Hill. And if anything major happens in the hearing, we will take you back in there live. Barr is spending most of the day attempting to reassure Democrats that they have no reason to be concerned about the Mueller investigation and a previous memo he wrote about it. I believe it is vitally important that the special counsel be allowed to complete his investigation. I believe it is in the best interest of everyone, the President, Congress, and the American people, that this matter be resolved by allowing the special counsel to complete his work. I wrote the memo as a former attorney general who has often weighed in on legal issues of public importance, and I distributed it broadly so that other lawyers would have the benefit of my views. My memo was narrow explaining my thinking on a specific obstruction of justice theory under a single statute that I thought, based on media reports, the special counsel might be considering. But despite clearly laying out his stance, Democrats tried to hammer him on the same issue. It looked like a job applica application. And so that's what I want you to refer to. Well, that's ludicrous. If I wanted the job and was going after the job, there are many more direct ways of me bringing myself to the president's attention than writing an 18-page legal memorandum. Will you commit to this committee that you will not allow the president or his attorneys to edit or change the special counsel report before it is submitted to Congress or the public? I, I already said that I would not permit editing of, of my report. And then, as we've seen in previous hearings, Democrats also pressed the nominee about whether he would be able to stand up to President Trump. What would be your breaking point? When would you pick up and leave? When is your Jim Mattis moment when the president has asked you to do something which you think is inconsistent with your oath? I am not going to do anything that I think is wrong, and I will not be bullied into doing anything I think is wrong by anybody, whether it be editorial boards or Congress or the president. I'm going to do what I think is right. And then I want to just play for you this other sound that was caught off camera of Senator Dianne Feinstein. Mm. You want to listen? And so you see this a, a pretty easy road for him heading to confirmation. Oh, I think so. We'll see. All right. So I think that, you know, she's reading the tea leaves that this looks like a confirmation that might just sail through. Oh, interesting. What do you think of that? Um, I get all the interest in the investigation, but it's amazing how the, how the media and the, and the Democrats are following the same script, super obsessed with how this will impact Mueller. I mean, if, if an asteroid came and wiped out half of the United States, the, <laughs> the most important, the lead at MSNBC and CNN will be, how does this impact the Mueller probe? Well, there are 150 million people dead, but we need to know more about the Mueller probe. And then, uh, just as it's like, every question is, how are you going to deal with Donald Trump? So the, it it's basically boils down to this. We hate Trump. Uh, you like Trump, we hate you too. So he's not applying for AG. He's applying to gain entrance into the Donald Trump hate club. Mm. And he's got to like, he's got to say all the right things. I believe there's a tree house out back for that. <laughs> there might be. With I'm... the secret knock. You have here, um, Jesse, a nominee who's, he's already been the attorney general before. And in mm. fact, when the senators were not referring to him as Mr. Barr, they would have to say general because that was the title and you hold it for the rest of your life. And he's a guy who's willing to come back. He was almost going into, into semi-retirement. He's willing to be a public servant. How do you think it went today? I think it went really well. And Juan would agree with me, so he doesn't <laughs> need to speak. Um, I, I, I believe he handled all these senators very deftly. This was not a Jeff Sessions situation where he's like, oh, da, 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 da. He was very smooth, and he, he was very direct. And everything he said was based on law. When he was asked, oh, you know, well, what would you base a, recru a recusal on? He said, 
the facts, and it stopped a few senators in their tracks. They want him, and I agree with Greg, they, they don't want a Trumper as AG. They want a weak AG. They want someone that's going to recuse at the slightest whiff of controversy. And they want someone that's going to treat Mueller like a god. And I think he kind of you know, straddled that pretty well. He said, if there's something that's going to happen, I will deal with it. But I'm not going to abdicate my responsibility as AG. I have an authority here, and I'm going to be a strong attorney general. But he also had said in this memo that Comey deserved to be fired. And Mueller going after an obstruction case against the president was kind of on weak legal ground. And Mueller shouldn't have stacked his team with Democrats. It didn't look good. And he said, and I think that's caught President Trump's attention, is that there's a lot of reasons to go after Hillary on Uranium One and things like that more than to go after a Trump-Russia collusion in 2016. Uh, not Uranium One again. Hey, I didn't <laughs> bring it up. Like that was Bob one. Barr. But um, they're, they're, to, speaking of President Trump meeting with uh, Bill Barr, he was asked about that. Let's play that sound, and we'll get Juan to react. Uh, the president wanted to know, you know, he said, oh, you know Bob Mueller. How well do you know Bob Mueller? And I told him how well I knew Bob Mueller. And I said, Bob is a, is a straight shooter and should be dealt with as such. And... Uh, Sort of, he said something to the effect like, so uh, are you envisioning some role here? And I said, you know, actually, Mr. President, right now is, is, I, I couldn't do it. Uh, you know, I just my personal and my professional obligations are such that I'm, I'm unable to do it. And Juan, in another exchange, um, uh, Mr. Barr said that he does not believe Bob Mueller would ever be involved in a witch hunt. So do you think Democrats will be satisfied with this hearing today? No. Uh, you know, to me, this is about Trump wants to control the Justice Department. I think that's why he forced out uh, Jeff Sessions, who was a Trump loyalist but had recused himself. So I think the standards, Dana, for the Democrats was if the ethics officials come to you and say, Mr. Attorney General, we think you should recuse yourself, will you uh, abide by their findings? And he said no. He said he would go with his own sense of whether or not he should be recused. Similarly, and I think this is the big point, it's not a matter of, you know, the hate anybody club. There was a question about whether or not he will release the report, the Mueller report. And he said, you know what, uh, the, uh, the way that we deal with, I think, what they're called declination memos, where they decline to, in, to prosecute somebody, is we don't go out and talk about them. Right. Uh, and so we may not release all of it. Well, guess what? The polls are pretty clear on this. It's like a majority of Americans say... His number one job should be release whatever Mueller finds. Don't cover it up. Don't let Giuliani edit it. Put it out there for the American people. And he refuses to say well, that. There, and there have been Republican senators, Katie, who have said that they also want that report to be public, but it will be the attorney general's decision. Well, it's been such a big topic of conversation for the country for the last two years that it should be released in full as much as possible. But he didn't say he wasn't releasing it for reasons of personal political um, purposes or because the president doesn't necessarily want it released. He specifically referred back to the rules and regulations that are in the Justice Department when it comes to release and reports like this. But one thing that I caught today that I found interesting is I think there was a bit of a missed opportunity because everything was so focused on Russia that all of these other issues kind of got ignored. For example, there were questions today about Bill Barr's um, role as attorney general in the 1990s when there was a lot of crime. There's a reason why violent crime and murder in America today has been cut in half. It's a result of a lot of the policies that they put into place. And as you have Cory Booker and Kamala Harris and President Trump, pushing forward with criminal justice reform, which is important, he really did a good job of saying, look, I'm not going to apologize for the things that we did in the 1990s to bring down the crime across cities in America. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I am open to the idea that maybe we can pull some pull back on some of those policies now that we have solved a lot of the problem in places like New York and Washington, D.C. Chicago came up as one place where it hasn't been solved. So that's an issue that will be ongoing for the next 10, 20 years. And I don't think that they really. He also said, enough. Greg, that he would not target uh, marijuana, unlike the laws and like mess with what the states are trying to do. That's a good thing. Yeah, I guess that's a good thing. Um, be, well, I think it's it's. Uh, that was the, the other problem with Sessions, was I think that he wasn't going to go for it. I think that that's the direction of the country. And I do uh, uh, agree that um, we have to be really careful about talking about how great this police reform thing is right. going to be. Yep. Because the facts are the facts. 
we saw a dramatic reduction in crime, and that had something to do with policies that were now kind of saying, hey, maybe we don't need them anymore. And that's the, that's a thing that always happens. After something works, yep. we all start thinking maybe we don't need it anymore, like walls. Yeah. We don't need walls like anymore. Like windows theory here. Right, yeah. And he was very strong on border security. He said he supported barriers where they were necessary, and he was also very against sanctuary cities. So I thought everybody watching should be pretty pleased with this guy. You know one thing I would say on this? From the Democrats' perspective, he's not Matt Whitaker. And I think, <laughs> and man, who was the threshold? So, you know maybe what? That was a, maybe that was a strategy all yeah, along, right? I think so.